Hey everybody, happy Wednesday. I'm honestly too excited. Kylie was like, you're so excited. I am so excited because I am really eager to share with you all what I do for working on where and who questions. And if you've been my CF or one of my students, or if I've supervised you in any way, I've probably shown you my method for asking who and where and what questions. We're only gonna be doing who and where today, but I have a system that has really worked well for my kids with ASD. And I really love using this system. I started doing it years ago and it's just been my method this, this whole way through. And I finally made a green screen activity that adapts to the way that I do it in person. But this activity that I made today is also going to be an in-person activity. So this first half of the video is going to be showing how I do this on green screen. And then the second half is going to be how you can use these materials as printables and laminate them. And everything's going to be free. So keep watching. And I honestly want you all to share this with your friends who might be working with the ASD population and working with echolalia, because it's been a very successful method for me. And I want people to have free resources. So share this video, let them know there's free resources and the characters are really cute. So let's see. All right, so here's how it goes. What I like to do first is I am going to show three different locations. We're gonna call them locations. So we've got slide, and I'm going to model the where question first. So I'm going to say, where, slide. And I say it just like that, where, slide. And my kid will say, slide. Where, tree, tree where tree tree so i am not giving an opportunity for them to try the answer at first especially with my kids who are echolalic and are just they're just copying me right now so where tree tree where bench bench where bench bench we just go through that a few times okay so now that we've got our where questions what happens next who so i will say who Monster. Who? Monster. Who? Bat. Who? Cat. So these are our three characters that we're going to be working on. We've got three locations and three characters, and that is it. And I really want to say that is it, so I'm not trying to increase the opportunities for doing other where locations. No. Right now we're just practicing on I ask, you respond. I ask, you respond. I ask a who, you tell me a character. I ask a where, you tell me a place. So this is formulaic, really easy to track on data and a great way to just begin to work on who and where questions. We might not be practicing prepositions yet, we're not there. We're just working on who and where right now. So once we've identified that we understand how to imitate my where locations and how to imitate my who, then we go into a scene. So I made a fall scene. It's not Halloween necessarily because I wanted all of us to be able to use it ongoing and it's just a little bit Halloween. So it's appropriate for this week, but not too much Halloween that we can't print these resources and use them in person ongoing, just laminate them and use them again and again. So I didn't want them to be too thematic, but here we go. So now we're in the park and we've got our three locations that we've already practiced and mastered. So we have where bench, and I go through it again, where bench, where tree, where slide, we've got it. And then I will put in one character and I will say, who, bat, who, bat, who, bat. Then I go back through it again and I will say, who is on bench, bat. So I just added the location in the question, who is on bench, bat, who is on the bench, that, who is on the tree, that, who is on the slide, that. And then I will, if, if we've got those down, I then go back again and I start with who, where is the bat? And I might take that away and I will say bench. So I like to, in person, and I'll show you this after this, I like to pull the character away if I'm asking a where question because I don't want them to be distracted by the character and get it wrong. So I will show them that when I ask a where question, I'm talking about the, the place and not the character. So if I say, where is that? I will grab him and then I say bench so they can answer that again. If, I, if he's on the tree, I'll say, where is that? pull them away and I say tree. So they can easily figure out that there's a formula here. 
And for everybody who's watching this, I made PowerPoint slides that go through on. So we go on the bench, on the tree, on the slide. Then we did behind, behind the bench, behind the tree, behind the slide. And then I did in front as well, in front of the bench, in front of the tree, in front of the slide. Now this, I wouldn't even work on yet with any of my kids who are just learning who and where. I don't even care if I hear a preposition at all. I don't mind. I just wanna hear a location or a character if I ask where, if I ask who. But for my older kids or who are really kind of mastering the who and where, then I will make it a little bit more complicated. And I might say, who is in front of the slide? Who is in front of the tree? Where is the bat in front of the slide? Where is the bat in front of the tree? And then once we've gone through all of them, then he goes, you found me. And that is important. So we want to be part of a verbal routine here so our kids know that they're finished with one character. So the reward is just that I say, you found me and I do it in the same verbal routine each time and they know that that means that we're finished finding that. So I, I just like to incorporate that and you'll hear your kids starting to say, you found me because they are anticipating this routine. And I made the same exact sequence for cat and the same exact sequence for monster for you all. So he's on, 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 behind, 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 in front, in front, in front. And obviously, you all can see that you could print these and turn them into practice cards. And I love, 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 love doing this in person with multiple characters. And if you all want to see a more in-depth view of how I do it in person, I can post that later. But I'm going to show you how I do this in person, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so we've got our three locations here, and I will go through these again with my kid, and I will say, where, tree, where, bench, where, slide, and make sure that we've got those where answers nice and down pat. And then I'll introduce a who, so I'll say, who is this? Who is this? Monster, mm-hmm, and monster on the tree. So I'll say, where is monster on the tree? Where is monster on the bench? Where is monster on the slide? Then I go through it again, but with the who question. Who is on the tree? Monster, who is on the bench? Monster, who is on the slide? Monster. So we know that routine really well. So we know it goes where, 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 who, who, who. And remember, if you're doing a where question, it's nice sometimes if you can pull your character away. So if I said, where is monster and he's on the tree, I'll say, where is monster? Tree. Where is monster? Bench. Where is monster? Slide. And I just like to go through that so they know not to answer a where question with a who. And then you can go through that same sequence with each character. And after you're finished mastering each character, then we can start to introduce two characters and then increase it to three. So if we've got two characters here, I'll start with where. Where is monster? Pull them away. Bench. Where is the cat? Pull them away. In the tree. So then if we've got that down, we can do three and we can do where, where, where. Where is the bat? on the slide? Where is the monster on the bench? Where is the cat on the tree? And then you can start to do who questions. Who is on the slide? Who is on the bench? Who is on the tree? And go through where, 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 who, who, who. And if we've really mastered that, then I will alternate locations so that the answers change based on where you put your characters. And if we really get advanced, then we can switch and alternate between a who and a where. So I would say, where is the monster on the slide? Who is on the bench? That. Where is the cat? Tree. Now that is level 10. We do not get there in a day. That often takes a lot of practice. Let's see what happens when we do master that though. Once we have mastered all three of the simplified images, then we can incorporate a receptive language task and give directions. So I might have my three characters here on the sidebar, our three locations, and I can have my client put things where I ask. So put monster on the bench, put bat on the tree, put cat on the slide, and then we can answer those questions with multiple characters within a scene. So this is how we get to that next step of answering more complex questions. So in this scene, we could say, who is on the bench? Who is on the tree? Who is on the slide? Where is the monster? Where is the bat? Where is the cat? Tricky, but 
what we can get to this point once we've mastered everything else. Okay, so now you've seen how I do this in person and how I do it on green screen. And I just really want you all to know that I rely on this method so heavily with my kids who are FLA like, and it has been the number one way that I start to begin, just begin working on WH questions. It's through a very specific hierarchical routine that we start very, very simply with simple picture cards and then moving into character cards and then we do just one character and then I increase it to two characters and once we've really mastered it I include three characters and then I mix around the questions so I don't start getting into mixing up a where and a who question back to back with multiple characters until I know we have fully mastered step one two three four five and this might be totally familiar to you all and you're like, yeah, we've been doing this. We know how to do this. But for the CFs who are watching or people who have not yet mastered answering and asking who and where questions with your kids, I hope that this is useful. Send it to anybody you know who's working with kids like this or struggling with this because it's a game changer. And I'm so excited to be able to give you all some in-person materials. Yay! I'm really excited about that because that's just going to start to be a trend because remember, hybrid model. You know, we can work on this stuff virtually and in person. And I really want to make sure that our green screen activities can carry over to real life too. So I hope you all are having a great week. Talk to you later.